Hey, what's up, guys? Happy Thursday. Welcome to God's Favorite Home Girl. Hey, y'all. Let's see. Let's get people in here. I'm super excited about tonight. Hey, Shelly. Hey, Kirsten. Hey, y'all. Girl. God's favorite homegirl, another homegirl's in the building. Thank you. Had to give y'all a nice little aesthetic, you know, vibes. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm super excited about tonight. We're going to give people just a couple of minutes to get in here. And then we're going to bring in our first special guest. So, I'm super excited. I don't know about you guys, but I've been waiting on this all week. Um, but, yeah, it's the vibes, like Shelly said. So share this. If you guys are in here, share this with your friends, your followers. I'm going to share this. Let's see. Let's get all everybody in here. All right. Y'all drop in the comments what you guys want to know about tonight. If you guys have any burning questions, stay active with me. It's about to be lit. The confessionals of the professionals. We'll give them another maybe two minutes. Is that cool with y'all? Or you want to jump in? Give me a temperature check. Sister. Comments. Cool. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Confessionals of the professionals. Hey, Sasha. Hey, girl. All right, cool, Shell. Give me one minute. All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring in our first guest. She is my sister. She's amazing and wonderful and has always been just so helpful and super wonderful to me. Um, Y'all, she goes by the name of Kirsten or Hey Kirsten if you follow her. And if you don't, you're going to want to follow her after this. So, without further ado, y'all throw up some flame emojis, some that good stuff while I bring in my good sis, Kirsten. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. I'm, oh, 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 oh. Aww, that was such a cute intro. Oh, you know how I feel about you. Hey. hey. I'm so <laughs> delighted. I'm so happy to be here with you. How you doing? Likewise. I'm good. I'm good. I'm really good. I'm happy to be here. It's been a really long time <laughs> since I've seen you, and I don't like that. Um, Shelly knows this, but my desire is to live off social media, like only live in real life. So, oh, yeah, that's why it probably feels like it's been a while. Yeah, no, no, it's not even that. I meant like our interaction. Oh, in in the physical, correct. It's been some time. I miss it, and I miss you. I miss you too. It's good to see you. I see you've been popping and keeping it going during the pandemic and you know quarantine you have kept yourself very relevant and consistent and you know there is nothing that I'm more proud of than a young sister who is just out here flourishing and getting her brand going I love it I just love the energy thank you so much (laughs) listen the comments going crazy dreams not playing come on play Nice little flex. We love to the see it. The blood brothers are here. Hey, blood brothers. Yes. She's talking about, come on, flex. <laughs> okay. So, I do want to go ahead and jump in. Oh, you. Cheers, sis. Cheers. Let Cheers. this be. May the, may the odds be ever in everybody's favor, okay? Um, <laughs> so, for those people in the comments who aren't familiar with you like we are, um, I am. Um, give us just a little brief background on who you are, what you're doing here in Atlanta, because you know I know you here. Are you? Here? Are you with me? I'm still here. Okay, great. I'm here. Period. <laughs> I'm okay, here. Good. So I am Kirsten. For those of you all that I don't know and don't know me, I um, I'm from Atlanta, born and raised on the west side because that matters. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I work, I've worked in the music industry for um, over 10 years now. It's kind of crazy. So for over 10 years. So I am a manager, I manage an artist, a producer. I'm also an indie marketing consultant. Um, so that's what I'm doing most 
now because of the pandemic. I'm really focusing on that. Um, and what else am I? I'm a, I'm just an entrepreneur. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I have a lot of ideas. I like to try a lot of things and execute them. If they work, they work. Work. If they don't, they don't. But so far, so good. Okay, and that's the serious. I was waiting on you to throw out the <laughs> entrepreneur piece because that that's what I know. Like I know that <laughs> yes, but ATL a brand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for the young entrepreneurs like myself, I want to start at the very beginning. What mm -hmm. was that moment for you when you were like, I need to go this route versus really working for somebody else? <clears throat> I'm going to be like, I've had to be honest with myself in this um, pandemic and the quarantine. I did, I, I did not set forth to be an entrepreneur. I think it's just something that lives inside of me. I had an idea and I didn't have any money to pay anybody to help me to do it. Um, I personally like working in, you know, with teams. I like to work with other people. Sometimes working by myself can be very, very stressful. And that's what I've been doing over the years with ATL, um, which is why we go through emotional ebbs and flows with that. Right. But I liked working on the team that I was working on, but I just had an idea and I wanted to execute the idea and I didn't know, you know, who to call on, who to ask for help. But because of my experience in, you know, music and hustle gang and um, Strivers Row and a coup, I knew how to brand. I knew that the best way for me to be a billboard for myself was to put it on a t-shirt. And so once I put it on the shirt, you know, I started getting questions about it and it just developed from there. So I didn't set forth and say, oh, I, I want to be an entrepreneur. Um, it just kind of happened that way. Oh, girl. So it's funny that you say that because for me, it was like, and, and I call myself a baby entrepreneur, but for me, it was like, I knew I didn't want to be in public wearing that green apron. Like I just <laughs> knew that mm -hmm. wasn't going to be a thing. No, mm -hmm. I can't point you down aisle four. I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, to your point about, you know, just having quarantine to sit and think about things. Like, I've had a lot of time. I just knew being, and I, I, I guess I'm saying this out loud. I knew that I wanted to be a radio personality, right? Mm -hmm. Quarantine has showed otherwise really you'd be surprised i've had a lot of time to sit like i've like listen i'm a nail tech now i'm uh you okay know, i'm a canva pro girl um oh and there there is a need for you people you canva pros let me tell you something y'all need to y'all need to go and start marketing those skills because that is very marketable i cannot stand doing anything that has to deal with decks and you know um presentations Listen, so that's the skill, sis. That $13 will make you want to learn something real quick, okay? <laughs> Correct. That service, I couldn't pay anybody else to do it, but I was willing to spend time sitting mm -hmm. in this time. Um, yeah. I feel like you mentioned this, but you're in real estate, too? No. I'm not. No? I was about to say, please I'm... don't. Don't, don't, don't. Please don't. No. I was about to no. say, oh, my gosh, what, what don't you do? But that's my no. motto now. So what can't she do? I mean, you know, I I buy and, and I've bought a house and sold a house and I'm buying another one. So, you know, maybe, but mm. not really. I'm going to stay out of that lane. Okay. Thank God. <clears throat> Listen, so being in quarantine, like I said, I've had a lot of realizations, but for you, especially being in the industry that you're in, what are some of the transitions and things that you've been going through with your own personal brand with having this time to sit down? Like, how have you been able to um, work with your artists and producers and keep them inspired and creative? Um, so this this time, I'll be honest, it's been the most busy that I've been in like the past year. Like I was moving around, traveling a lot for the past two years, but having this, like having to stay at home and be on the computer, I've picked up a lot of projects. And so it's caused me to just be on the phone and emailing all day long. And I'm not mad at it, but it is definitely, um, it's definitely picked up. So whereas I was focused on traveling with artists and getting certain, you know, building certain relationships, now it's more so the marketing consulting again, um, like I said in the beginning, and working with indie artists to figure out how to now pivot their plans in order to accommodate this digital era that we are in now. Because as you guys know, a lot of people are, are used to being able, you know, there's some people that 
focus on digital. They're really good online. They suck in person, you know, but some people really thrive when they can do shows and we can, when they can go and, and, you know, go to different clubs and kind of touch hands with the DJs. So some people are, are better at that particular route. And those are the people that I've had to make plans to, you know, pivot their careers to kind of figure out how can we still build our leverage and build some momentum while having to do it, you know, from the confines of our sofas. So that's yeah. why things have picked up for me. And, um, it's been it's been interesting because everybody has kind of struggled with it a little bit. Just you know, I feel like when things don't go the way you planned them, you know, twenty twenty came, we were all ready to turn up and have clear vision and you know be very focused on our direction. But when things don't go the way we planned, a lot of times we get a little stuck. Like, oh shit, what do we do now? You know. So I think for a lot of people, it was trying to figure that out when when the quarantine first started happening. People were just like standing still. We don't know what to do. Streams are down. This has happened. That's happened. It was so much news and so much happening, um, so many updates on a regular basis that people did not know whether to move or stand, you know, or stay put. But now we see we can't afford to not do anything. So the marketing plans and, and the and the clients have picked up because people right. are like, well, we need help figuring this out. This ain't our, our strong suit. So right. that's where I come in. Thank right. You. And I mean, I can only imagine, like, with all these different platforms popping up, like Twitch, which I'm sure has been around for a while, but people are just starting mm -hmm. to catch the wave. Um, you mentioned mm -hmm. DJs earlier and your artists and producers being able to connect with them. Have Has it been difficult for you to connect with these DJs when going live was, you know, really on and popping? Because people were on, on, and it was a <laughs> lot. It was a lot. The frustration for me was that I felt like a lot of DJs, and this is no shade to anybody that's in here that represents the DJ, but I felt like a lot of DJs didn't pivot fast enough and didn't take advantage of the opportunity that was in front of them. They, they had a direct opportunity to break somebody online, you know, on, on Instagram or wherever. And I think that because they were just trying to see, well, we'll be able to go, you know, this only going to last for three weeks and then we can go back to the club. No, 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 no. Focus on the now. Like we said, go ahead and start thinking about what your pivot is going to be. So a lot of DJs, like, and I got together with a couple people and figured out, okay, what's, what's our plan going to be? How are we going to access the outside world? How are we going to make sure the music gets from our computers to theirs, um, you know, car speakers? So right. what the, the, the barrier was that DJs weren't doing a lot to be able to activate these people. So we didn't know how to talk to them. We didn't know how to get in touch with them. And not get in touch with, I mean, like, we didn't necessarily want to tell them how to create their strategy for this particular peer, but it's more so like, okay, what y'all going to do? You know, are y'all doing right. a drive by, um, you know, remote or are y'all um, Are you doing the, the concert parking lot? Like, what are you doing? Exactly. What, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Are you doing a show on, on Wednesdays at eight o'clock to where you have indie artists coming through and performing? Are you doing interviews on Thursday where you're talking to people about, you know, all the things that they can do to get in touch with you. But it's so many people did not understand how to operate outside of their normal, you know, their more normal lives that it kind of put us at a standstill. I think now everybody's kind of getting back in the rhythm, particularly because now things are opening up a little bit more. But I'm hoping that what people learn from this is that at any given moment, things can take a, a, a sharp left and we'll have to redesign the way that we're doing, you know, our everyday lives. Listen, hold that, hold that, because this thing... <laughs> I am not letting this light mess this up, but okay. um, it, it's funny. Thank you. It's funny that you say that though, because DJ Scream would tell me all the time, you know, DJ Scream and E.T. Cali were two people that would always say, you have to be ready to, um, evolving is a part of this whole industry, right? And mm -hmm. being ready and willing, like you'll never be ready to make mm -hmm. the change. Absolutely. So to hear you say you were coming across a lot of people who were like, Mm, you know, we need to think about three months from now. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take your mm -hmm. couple of days and, 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 you know, sleep if you need to. But yeah. how do we continue to push the needle forward? Yeah. Um, Shelly was in the comments saying, people need a team. And a lot of artists, they'll even ask me, I'm not the person that's here to represent <laughs> you, Frank. Um, <laughs> but people want to know, you know, how do I get a team if I don't have any money? So 
what advice would you recommend to those people out there? I, I always say use your friends, but your friends that, that's might all like. you can do. You can't convince nobody to 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 rock with you. You can't convince them, and if you do, you know that that may be a, a lost battle that you'll fight. Like you got to you got to connect with people that are genuinely that genuinely care about what you're doing, want to see you win. Because let me tell you something: a lot of the managers here will tell you too, and artists that it takes a long time to make a dollar out of 15 cents. You know what I mean? Like, it's not something that comes quick. For the first few years, you're going to be working for free. And you have to make sure that in working for free, it's worth it. What would you do hey. for free? If working with artists or, you know, independence of people who you believe in is something that you're passionate in, then do that. You know what I mean? But it's, it's hard to convince people who don't know you to be passionate about you if there's nothing in it for them. Absolutely. And the other thing is, even... My thing when I meet people is a lot of them have nothing when they come to the table. It's like, if you think you're the dopest rapper, at least take some time to learn the system so that you can build your own record. Like, learn learn the craft before you come and tell me that you need help, because then you don't even know how to tell me you need help. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the issue <laughs> is, and sometimes I blame it on generations, but I'm sure the generation before me said it about my generation, is that Right now, the internet is at our hands, though, so I just find it kind of crazy that there's not research being done. A, it should be research on what to do, how to do, and, you know, all the all the different platforms you have the opportunities and the potential to reach. But B, understand that you, that an artist aspiring to be in that seat, you know, or, or be in that top box on Apple Music or Spotify, it's 4 million people, probably more, 400 yeah. million people looking to be in that same slot. You know what I mean? So so I think a lot of times I say artists got to be real with themselves. There are some artists that are that would be great executives. There's some artists that would be a great uh, manager. <laughs> There's some artists that would be a great, um, you know, A&R. But yeah. people have to be real with themselves. If you're in it and, you, and you're building momentum and you're focused on, you know, making sure that you get to the point where you want to be, because a lot of people aren't driven either. They don't know how to drive a car. They didn't know how to do is perform, but they can't get themselves to those next levels by themselves so if that's you then then i think it has people have to be honest with themselves and say perhaps this is something that i'm gifted with but it may not be the best use of my talent and what's happening is people just aren't real with themselves about what they should actually you know how they should be conducting their talents mm, 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 mm. that was a word i'm sorry i was over here getting my life um look yeah right hey Pam. <clears throat> cancel culture is real right we're seeing it left and right. I don't right. know if it's real or not. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, it's a lot of well, people that have been canceled that's been let back in. We just, we forgot. Right. So this, a, this, this is a two-part for me, right? Go ahead. If you're going to cancel somebody, cancel them. But I also think as the people who have created cancel culture, um, it, it shows other people that we're so quick to give up on our own for making a mistake, I feel like, that we show no grace to them, even if it's something really dumb. She had to take a drink on that one. <laughs> you wanna know why I hate, why I, I hate the internet because I love it and I hate it. I hate it because it gives people too much power. You cannot cancel a whole human being in their career. Not, not to say it could never happen, but I'm just saying like we, the, the focus sometimes be so wrong. Like you said, as opposed to like helping some people understand this night, you on the wrong side of things. We're so quick to say, nope, nope, you can't do this no more. Like, people can't be wrong sometimes. <laughs> you know, right. people can't mess up in public sometimes because we give people so much power, you know, as a celebrity, as an artist, to where we expect them to be exactly who we want them to be. And people yeah. get very, very disappointed when they are not who we thought they were. And I just think that's unfair again. That's another reason I stay off the internet because I just think it's crazy that we we conceptualize who these people are. You know what I mean? And we want them to figure out we want them to be exactly who they we think they present themselves to be. And we want them to speak on behalf of black people and speak on behalf of women. And these people don't speak on behalf of me. Ooh. <clears throat> they don't and and they don't. I think especially we give the people who are um who have blown up for doing, I won't say regular things, but like, it ain't been that Washington, okay? I agree. And I see somebody said some folks need to be on punishment for a moment, though. I agree with that, but they team need to get them together. 
<laughs> you know, they team need to get them together. And and again, we've lost the we've we've lost the um art form of uh, artist development to where people are having conversations about what to say, what not to say, how to present yourself. This is how you go into this situation. This you know what I mean. We've lost that by um being able to instantaneously open up our phones and and just start talking. So that's a lost art to where people used to say so much messed up stuff back in the day, and I'm not definitely not co-signing that at all right. but i think now <laughs> you know it's just hard it's hard to um get a handle of because people are so direct yeah yeah i think um us calling these people or giving a new level to celebrity um has really made this very interesting for me personally mm -hmm. so going into this next part new industry rules like how is the industry changing how has it been for you personally coming into something like this where we're seeing people blow up for like for example i love mr hotspot because i love his energy whereas mm -hmm. 10 years ago that wouldn't have been able to fly mm -hmm. um so do you feel like the industry is now i feel like a lot more forgiving than it has been is it like what what is the new industry standard in order to come on in um in my opinion yes in your <laughs> opinion people may disagree. in my opinion um you can have the best music that anyone has ever heard you can rival the best but if you don't have a personality to sell it it doesn't really matter <laughs> you know what i mean i just feel like the new industry standard is that there has to be a total package. There are some people that, that get away. Like, if you know how to work the internet, you know, Lil Nas X, you know yeah. how to work the internet and you figure out your digital strategy and you have learned how to make it work for you, cool. But you got to have a personality and you have to know how to engage to draw people into your personality. Mm. So to me, those mm. are the new industry standards. Before it was all about the music. And you'll hear some people still say, it's about the music, it's about the music. But some people, it, they got the best music, but they boring as hell. Like nobody cares about them. Like, okay, cute. Get a song to somebody else, be a writer. You know what I mean? So I think that um, they have to be able to work a room, to work the internet and know how to make these things work for them. Yeah, definitely. So to that point, I, my homeboy is uh, 645 AR. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Oh, he got Ooh. the little... The squeaky little voice. High voice. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we went to high school together, and mm -hmm. I didn't even know he was rapping. But when I talked to him, uh -huh. he's still mm -hmm. the same person from high school. It's just he figured out how to... He just he figured it out, and I'm just amazed by it because people really took off with it. Um, so with that, during this time specifically, when I hope most people are still in the house, how would you best? What's the best advice you would give to somebody trying to connect with their fans, um, even if IG Live is starting to get played out? IG Live is one of a million <laughs> platforms. <laughs> right. You know, to me, I think it's, the che it's, it's, it's cheating a little bit. You know, it's easiest. I'll say that. I mean, it's not cheating. It's easier. But you can go over there. I see Tumblr's, you know, picking back up again. You could go to Tumblr and Triller and TikTok. I feel like people need to try out all of the platforms, even the newer ones. It's possible that maybe they'll break on, you know, another one of those platforms. Maybe Instagram is too crowded. Maybe they'll they'll be the front runners, just like DJ Khaled was for Snapchat and whoever was for TikTok. It's so many different ways that people can find a way to engage online. I think people need to really, um, they really need to research what's out there, what's available to them, and what works best for them. You know what I mean? For somebody opening up a camera on Instagram and just talking is not the way. Or maybe they don't want to, you know, they, they pictures not dope. You know what I mean? They don't have nobody on their team yet to get them the right type of pictures. But if they go to another platform and they can do a quick little video, perhaps that's the way. So I think that for people that are home, continue to work on the craft. I think everybody should be at home recording and writing and just kind of stockpiling OnlyFans. I see Chris with their OnlyFans. That's <laughs> right. another platform. <laughs> like, there's so many platforms that we're just focused on Instagram. If Instagram fell off the face of the earth tomorrow, so many people would be lost, and we would just lose millions of artists with them because they have not developed their online 
home, their digital home beyond Instagram. I think everybody should have a website and everything should come back to their website so that they're making sure that they can build and create their own database to talk to them directly. You don't want a middleman in your business. You know, we don't own most, don't. Of, most of the, um, yeah, we don't own this stuff. So I think to, to continue to research what's out there, try things and figure out what's native to them. Um, continue to record you know, and work on their craft and, and write music and just, you know, don't be depressed. <laughs> so, rule number one, do things that make one. you happy. Yeah, rule yeah. number one, do things that make you happy and do things that are fulfilling to your heart. Okay, y'all. Y'all heard Kirsten say, use TikTok. I was on TikTok. I was going ham with it too. Didn't necessarily know my niche, but it was working for me. I'm getting back on TikTok. Y'all heard it first. It is what it is. Because it just had, like, I work with teens as is. So mm -hmm. it just, it helped me connect. And I've also been able to bring on young talent for soul food sessions, which I do on Fridays. Mm -hmm. So being able to find mm -hmm. these UK singers and get on, you know, have them hop on my <laughs> TikTok, link, have them get on my live has just been really <laughs> cool. Like, the connections on there is really crazy. They're a lot more responsive and they be getting it. In these kids are blowing songs. I try to, I try to um, allocate budgets for those projects that I have budgets for. I do try to allocate some budget for micro influencers on TikTok and Shrilla just because I feel like it's important to not always reach for the people with you know two million followers. Sometimes a person with forty thousand followers or you know twenty thousand followers that has a high engagement, those are the people that you may want because they can get they can speak directly you know more plainly to their audience a little bit better. So I try to make sure that I can get a budget for those people because being able to connect with those creatives is important. And also them being on, you know, those platforms and building an audience and being consistent to that. I think it deserves a level of, you know, um, attention from labels that are just trying to take these ideas and use them for their own personal gain. Facts. Listen, yeah, we need to talk yeah. after this because I may have some people for you. Cause yeah. Send them my way. I'm gonna FaceTime you after this. <laughs> um, so before we, you know, transition, I do want to give the people in the comments just a minute to ask a few questions. So if you have anything, hit the Q and A down below. Listen, I'm okay. giving y'all each one minute, one minute each. Um, clearly, Crystal, I'm I trying to see what what she's doing, what Crystal's doing on her uh, TikTok. What do you want, Anissa? Crystal, so Shelly mentioned OnlyFans, which is dope. Um, Tumblr, I'm going to have to, I never really got into Tumblr, but I'm going to have to check that one out. I love Tumblr. I'm a Tumblr fan. Listen, I couldn't, I was so confused. I was like, what am I even doing on here? But it's okay, I have time. Um, and last, Tumblr was Pinterest before Pinterest. Okay. Because I'm a Pinteraster. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm good for it. Yeah. yeah the it interface is. was different. Okay, Shelly wants to know what's next for me. Where's Earl? Where's Chip? Um, Earl is in LA. Chip is in Miami. Earl is working. Chip is working. So it's a blessing. Chip is working. Chip is working. Trip, <laughs> Chip is working and taking thirst trap photos in the house. Him cooking meals and all type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, Chip is doing a lot. But Chip is um Chip is doing a lot of recording. He's writing a lot, so that's great. We just, you know, making sure that the energy is good around and that we build a solid plan that, you know, um, will yield us some some viable partnerships. Uh, Earl is, he just had a project to come out with, well, not a project, but he had like eight songs that came out on Little Yachty's project. And we got a recent release from Smoke Perp and Jack Harlow. So it's a couple different um there's a couple more placements he has coming out, which we're really excited about. So he's just continuously recording. Um, for me, I'm still doing marketing consulting. So if you guys have people with a budget, um, I definitely am down to, you know, figure out if we can work together. If there's a young independent artist with a budget and they need some help navigating the digital marketing space, the, mar the marketing space, I'm your girl. And in terms of ATL, um, we'll get to that. Yes. We'll get to that song. Yeah. I have, I'll be having some announcements soon. You mentioned mm -hmm. um, brands, partnerships, representation, all that stuff, that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know people want to know because right now 
black has been a vibe, but black is really popping right now for a lot of companies. So <laughs> best, yeah. best advice do you give to the people out there who would love to work with a certain company but don't know how to go about it? A black company? No, no, no. Com a company, period. Like, <clears throat> an artist or a person, let's say I wanted to pitch myself for whatever because I don't have somebody to do it. <laughs> now is the best time for you to present and sell being who you are. Um, I think we kind of got to stop putting on airs about um, whether we have Southern roots or, you know, uh, Western roots or whatever that is. I think we got to just authentically be who we are. I think for so long as Black people, we've tried to fit in these spaces that wanted to, um, you know, emulate us, but not necessarily wanted to celebrate us. And so we just have to make sure that we come with authentic authenticity and we make sure that we are wanting to work with people, not because of their audience or not because of the money, but because that brand speaks to who you are. I know it's easier said than done, but I think we have to make sure that we're being honest with ourselves too, in terms of who we connect ourselves with. So what I would let, what I would say to you is in approaching different companies, be sure that you're approaching them with their full self and they can receive you, you know, the way that you are and make sure that for what they want you to do, you, you know, don't just take whatever it is that they're going to give to you. You set your price based off of how you're going to perform and that's the way you handle it. You don't allow anybody to tell you what you're worth based off of them utilizing your, you know, your presence and your image. I don't think so, you know how to answer your question. Yeah, did. I don't think, I think you spoke directly to my soul. This is the second time today I've been read, so I appreciate it. I think God did this perfectly. You do this to me every time we talk, side note. Um, um, you know, I'm a good reader. Give the people But I believe, I mean, I, I believe what? in you. I, I, I see what you guys are doing. Um, it's like everybody on this chat is popping for real, though. Like, you know what I mean? So I feel like, honestly, and I'm going to go ahead and get out of your way because she got a word, too. But everybody <laughs> that's here that's put a comment here that has that has joined, I I have seen their names, or I recognize them, and I think as a collective, we're around so many people that have so much great potential, but we just have to kind of build that energy off of each other and make sure that we know what our worth is as a collective and yeah. not allowing being in a secondary market such as Atlanta to distract from what our full purpose is and our full intention is, so we just gotta, you know, like keep that energy flowing through us and, and continue to um to push forward. Absolutely. Well, for the people who aren't following you, give them your Instagram real quick. I am Hey Kirsten, K I R S T E N. Period, Pooh. Y'all make sure you follow Kirsten. <laughs> Please, we love the follow. Hey, everybody. Um, yes, Kirsten, thank you so much for talking to me. I'm going to bug you after this, okay? Okay, I'll be here. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye, girl. Oh, y'all, I feel like I've just been giving all the gems that I needed. I'm Anissa Brene, for those of you guys that are tuning in, and I know she don't want no followers. You know, I just got to say that. Give her some follows anyway. Um, I'm Anissa Brene. I'm your hostess with the most for the evening. Um, y'all, shout out to God's favorite homegirl for having me. Up next, we got my girl, Dree Jack, coming up. Dree Jackson is my sis um, at Dree Jack Music. I'm super excited. Also, make sure you guys head over to godsaverhomegirl.com um, and get your merch. Like, I'm wearing the OGT. Sorry, can't get that no more. But you can get and pre-order the God's Favorite People tee and sweatshirt. Y'all get on it. In a minute, it's going to be fall and you're going to be cold and you're going to need a hoodie. So get into it. Next, I'm getting my good sis, my girl. Round and round like an escalator. Yes, Dree, come on with it. Come Definitely on. will need to hear it. You outside with it. I knew. I knew you was outside, girl. You feel me? You feel I me? Knew. I tried to get the little, the same vibes you had back there. You, you feel me? You, no, no mosquitoes, okay? <laughs> Got the spray. Got the spray. Got the candle going. <laughs> no mosquito bites. Don't want none Good of that. Citron Good citronella. <laughs> okay. The business. Walmart. <laughs> Dream, what's up? What's up, girl? How you doing? How you living? Um, you know, I'm wonderful. I got two of my sisters with me. Kirsten well, three, Shelly. Came down and preach. You feel me? I'm I'm praising worship. I'm the benediction. I'm the <laughs> 
if all hearts and minds are clear, bow your head. There it is. <laughs> Listen. So we have Take something to talk about today. For those people yes. who don't feel like I have had the chance to get to know you, please introduce yourself <laughs> and give the pe- tell the people what it is you do. What it is? What's up? Um, what? my name is Drew Jack. I am from College Park, South Side. I know I Kirsten's like West Park. Side. It's the South Side, you feel me? It is. Um, I'm born and raised here. I am a recording artist. I'm a writer. Um, I dance a little bit, do a little jig. Um, yeah, I have a degree in music management. I have a bachelor's in music management. So when she was saying, you know, know your, know your path, I knew I could sing. So let me go to school for something else. Um, so if y'all need any management knowing y'all team let me know Kirsten hit me up let me I need a job you feel me <laughs> a little side hustle <laughs> but yeah I'm a creative um I'm 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 in the street. yeah I mean, you know do me you know theater what? all city girls jobs Period. Period. Listen, so with COVID and everything going on, <laughs> Kirsten is in the comments. Um, with COVID yes, and Kirsten. everything going on, I know we've had some time to get together and chat and have you on soul food sessions, which was super yes. awesome. Yes. Um, Thank you for having me. Up and down like an escalator. Okay. Okay. It's my song. Um, Carisha, please. Um. <laughs> Yeah, with COVID going on, what have you been up to? Because I'm so used to seeing you oh. in the front row at church. Haven't done that. Um, <laughs> sing it. I'm sad. I'm sad. Um, with COVID going on, I have just been recording. I purchased, you know, all my studio equipment. Uh, I've been, I've had the time to get my home studio together. Um, so I've been recording. I've been writing. Um fixing up the backyard, you know, for parties, quarantine parties that me and my family, you know, just our family, just a family. Okay. You know, no, no. I was just saying. Don't worry. (laughs) Don't worry. Okay. (laughs) But no, I just been recording. I've been creating. Um, I'm planning to release a single soon. So, you know, keep your ears and eyes open for that folks in the chat, you know. Um, But yeah, I'm just, I'm trying not to be depressed, like Kirsten said. I definitely had some shows planned and some things going on, but they were canceled due to COVID. But, you know, it's all good. God has our back. Yes, he definitely does. Sure. You you a lot <laughs> like me. I, too, have been getting my studio together in the house. Yes. Um, hey, Sasha. Just trying to, trying to get it together, trying to understand, like, what am I really supposed to be doing here? Yeah, um, yeah. I'm supposed to just be resting. I know I'm supposed to work and rest, but um, God. I, think I, I figured out the balance. Got, oh, praise Him. You know, because you can't stress yourself. You know, you're in the house. You know, you got time to do stuff. So just let the time, you know, if you feel like doing it today, all right, go ahead, figure it out, do it. But if you don't feel like doing nothing, have a <laughs> drink. Shout out to our house. Um, oh, you got. Riggy Rig. On the drink, um, you know, but you know, you just gotta, you just gotta pace yourself. I'm, I'm a Virgo and I'm an overthinker, so I have to plan everything you, out. You and Shelly, me and Shelly uh, are here. So much, <laughs> so much energy in here. Hey, <laughs> hey, Victor. Um, Hi, what's up? Hey, Shayna. So, is it safe to say that you have been like, what, are, what are your feelings on everything that's been going on? I know it's been a heavy time for us as a culture um, Mm -hmm. with everything going on, but how have you been able to maintain? How are you feeling? How are you mentally uh, still working at the same time? Because, you know, it was that weird period Mm -hmm. where we didn't, nobody felt comfortable posting anything other than justice for right. Um, Yeah. And I still feel that way. Um, Even with my single coming out, I'm trying to definitely, I mean, it's definitely a pivot. Like she was saying, that is the word for 2020, pivot. 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 Um, I have been just trying to figure out, like, what's the best way to put it out. Like, the dates the dates have, you know, all of my attention right now, trying to figure out, like, okay, should I put it out this week or next week? Yeah. You know, just figuring out that. And 
and really still having a voice in what's going on. Um, a couple, well, for Juneteenth, I did a virtual concert with Southwest Art Center and South Fulton um, Arts. And, you know, I did, uh, you know, what's going on with the world. Uh, you know, you have to just be cognizant of what's going on as an artist and still do what you do, like your your path in your artistry. So people don't be like, well, does she really care about that? Because if you say the wrong thing, folks, you know, they're going to be like, well, does she care? Do, is she really paying attention to what's going on? You know, want to um, yeah. And one, I don't want to get canceled. You feel me? But um, <laughs> can't nobody cancel me, but God. Uh, 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 uh. You might as well get that. You know how people got the tattoo? Can't nobody judge me, but God. Yeah, that's a jail tattoo. This is a quarantine tattoo, which you just talked about. Well, don't go, don't, don't go get no tattoos now. It's not safe. I'm not. I'm, I'm just telling the folks. You feel me? Mm -mm. But um, yeah. I'm just. You just gotta be true to yourself, like she said. I'm just. I'm just piggy. It's okay, but. It's okay. You know, you just gotta, you just gotta really think about what you want to say, when you want to say it, and make sure it's, it's said completely and truthfully from who you are. Yeah, because then well, it ain't gonna be believable. Most definitely, and especially um, you know, once it's out there, you can try to delete it, but even if it's up for thirty seconds, yeah. somebody, Some, uh, somebody got that screenshot. Somebody want to take you out. Somebody um, is there waiting listen so have you done beyond soul food sessions have you done any more digital live concerts Are um you, after soul food sessions i did the virtual concert um okay. but right now as i'm planning um uh, my release mm -hmm. i'm thinking of you know a little concert live or do it in the backyard film it and then you know maybe just release it after um, if anybody's in here and they have a live that they need an uh, RB singer, let me know. Follow me. Uh, my EP is out on everything. It's in the link in the bio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just out here. I am not the artist to be like on live and and talking to folks all day. I like, I like interaction, but you know, a video will will suffice. I'm in the studio or. I'm writing. I'll do a little behind the scenes little thing, but I'm here. It's okay, girl. Listen, <laughs> for everybody that's in the comments, if you have questions as we're talking, please drop them in the comments. Yes, we we will them. as we go. Um, Dree, one thing I said to you when we've talked in the past is how I love how supportive your fan base is, how your mm -hmm. family base always comes through whenever you're performing whenever you're speaking whenever you're doing whatever they are present <laughs> and loud and yes. i love it because a lot of people yes. don't have that so mm -hmm. how have you been able to continue connecting with your audience and also gain new um people mm -hmm. who you know love the vibe yeah um well because most of my fan base i'm really close to um, you know, I started recording and putting out music when I was a freshman at Clark Atlanta. So a lot of a lot of my fan base there we're close. Like we're either friends, they have they all have my number, or you know, we can contact each other at any given time. But right now, like as as things have closed down, I've I've had to push myself out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, my brother's a choreographer, so he was like, Hey, you wanna do the TikTok? Sure, why not? Let me get some let me get some more followers or let me get, you know, let me push myself out to the limit and be like, okay, yeah, she can do this too, or she can, you know, I'm writing. So any any artist that needs a song or something, let me know. We can we can figure it out. We can collaborate. And I think that's the most important part about being in this season of just we're sitting, we're waiting. We don't know what's going on. And and instead of having the anxiety of about what's going on, I feel like you could just push yourself a little bit more and figure out what other, you know, talents you may have that you didn't even know that you had. I literally just told Kirsten that same thing. Like, I told you, Canva, me and Canva, we've been spending a lot of time together. 
When I learned... Oh, yeah, Canva is the one. They did that with that one. You know, when I learned that my bag was a Birkin bag and not a, not, not a Louis bag no more, everything is yeah. deep. Everything was deep, okay? When I learned that there was some more pockets on this thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And deep, yes. it didn't tell me anything. Quarantine yes. really taught me a lot. And so the other thing, I love that you said your brother pulled you in on the TikTok. Like, like okay. in the comments. Shout out to Chloe and Hallie on the album. I got okay, do it. The one. Ungodly Hour. I mean, that's not okay. The name. But, I mean, Ungodly Hour. Love me in my Ungodly Hour. Love me when I got all the to talk when, about. Love me when I'm twerking like Tina from Bob's Burgers. Or love me when I'm cursing you out. That too. You know. And that's just period. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. As an indie artist, being in a pandemic specifically, like mm -hmm. you were just saying, um, your brother asked you to do the TikTok. Let me get some more followers. Let me do whatever. Have you tapped into any other websites or platforms you, for your brand personally that you're just like, yes, I like this. This works for me. Uh, Canva. You know, I okay. do some flyers, flyers on there. But no, not necessarily. Just like I am an introvert as well. Um, so I'm, I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. Um, I did get some information from Kirsten on here. So, you know, I'm gonna do my little work after this, but I'm working on a website when the single comes out, I'm working on, you know, it's just the working, we're working in progress. Yeah. What's the um, best? right now, Instagram, Twitter, there are my, and Facebook, you know, for all my aunties and uncles. Um, <laughs> but Instagram and Twitter, they have really, you know, they haven't filled me yet. So, but I'm Twitter is on doing that. Twitter is good because it's real time conversation. Yes. Whereas I feel like you can make a choice on any platform how you want to respond or whatever. But mm -hmm. I feel like Twitter is like a, um, like a running phone book because it is a running phone book. And I feel like you are you are kind of more truthful on Twitter. Yeah. Like you really say whatever you want to say and really don't care. It's so Ooh, quick. What anybody says about it. <laughs> it's so quick. But then mm -hmm. also, it's like, for me personally, who still works a corporate America job, mm -hmm. I gotta you go gotta back and clean this thing. Tailor it. You, got, you know, I can only say so much. My retweets can't be as popping. One thing I don't like is now that you can see the likes, I can't like what I really want. Oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, be careful, sis. I'm on you. What you been like? I'm, I'm on you too. Send me what you want to tweet and I'm going to tweet it for you. <laughs> no, that's what I do. I send it to my friends like this is I got this. you. Add me on the list. <laughs> that I will because I need it. Um, So no, I do for real appreciate that and I also love that, you know, if a lot of artists have obviously used Instagram Live, but I love that they're still yeah. on Twitter conversing and retweeting with their artists. Yeah. So for yeah. you, being an indie artist like especially what's some advice you would give to somebody on the come up when it comes to releasing a single who may not have um as much of a support system like you do um where do you start um i think that's kind of like grassroots um text it text it to all your friends have a link ready you can put the link or whatever the text message that you want to send in your notes and copy and paste that thing i was going to curse but we got we on you know uh Cro copy paste that thing <laughs> crooked crowns crooked halos <laughs> copy and paste it and send it to all your friends send it to all your friends your aunties your uncles your mama your daddy my mom sends emails to folks from when i have a show you know what i'm saying so it's just like it starts at home with your family with your best friends with your close cousins and you know have them send it out for you if you got a new song hey check this out if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know. And don't say that to nobody else. Right. Because it's my stuff. It don't matter if you like it. It's already out. So send a link to your folks. Right. I remember when I was trying <laughs> to break into this industry, um, I feel like some people in the comments can attest to this. I felt like I needed to be everywhere just so that mm -hmm. people got familiar with my face. Mm -hmm. um, did you feel like you had to go through those same ebbs and flows of being super present? I mean, I know we can't do it now, but like. Yeah. Um, well, starting off, yeah. 
I like like y'all was talking about artist development and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did artist development. You know, I was running up and down Monroe singing songs at the same time, and I was at events. You know, showing my face, saying my name, all of that stuff. But now I feel like being present on online, being present online, and not even just you know posting. You don't have to post to be present. You can. You can comment under under other artists' page. Hey, I like this DMing artist that you would like to work with over the time, you know, over the time that we don't have anything to do or anywhere to really go um, if you're really quarantining yourself, as you should be, people. Um, But, yeah, you know, just just figuring out where, what platforms you can be in. Like, even on the DJs who are doing lives and are doing that, like, put put a comment on there. Hey, check me out. I got this song or this whatever, I put the links in folks' lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, if you see this, you're going to go straight to the link and that's all you need to see. Yeah, I, 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 think, I mean, it's definitely hard though, because you can't really go anywhere but on your phone, but I think if you do it right and you do it with the right, you know, people but, or but to you, the right people, then. You said it earlier. You were like, have a, a note in your phone where you just have like these copy and paste. So the, yeah, copy and paste it. I made, when quarantine first started, I was on people's lives left and right. Like I had, yes. hey, my name's Anissa. I'm in this. I do this, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I had people following me. Like I'm an artist. I do this. Sending me music. You know, it was an overwhelming yeah. response. Just people are really paying attention to. Exactly. And that's, and I think that's the good part because people are at home. People are just paying attention to their phones. They have nothing else to do but check your DMs. They have nothing else to do but check your email. And it's a, you know what I'm saying? It's a nicely laid out email with all the information, no grammatical errors. And nope. they were like, oh, okay, well, this looks interesting. Let me figure it out. Let me let me check this out a little bit more. And they'll go to your page. They'll see, you know, your interaction and all that stuff. And I think that's, that's really helpful for moving forward, even if it's just a tiny step. I mean, you got that connection. So now who knows where it can go? Yeah, definitely. I was requesting in people's lives, whether I knew them or not. I was like, even if I know you, your followers might not know me. So if you pull yes, me, exactly. I, you know, I give you a little kiki real quick. They might like my personality. You want to go follow them? You know? They going to love your personality. Okay, girl. They going to like this. Period. They going to like this regardless. regardless. Um, so I do open it up to questions in the comments for everybody that's in here. Y'all, this is Dree Jack. If you didn't know her, now you do. Um, Dream, what's the project you have out right now called? Shelly talk about girl. My my girl is everywhere. You already know. Um, my project now is called Butterfly. It is out on every platform. It was released October 23rd of last year. Um, yes, yeah, seven songs on there. Like a little vibe. Grab a drink. Grab whatever else you like. And turn it up. Go to your car. Your nice speakers in the house. Yeah, turn, turn it up. up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Check out the videos that I got on YouTube for those songs. I got Wrong One is on there. Took a lot of work, so go go ahead and watch that. Dre took a lot of work, so go and watch that. <laughs> yes, give me my views, please. Um. Okay, well, I guess I'll be the one to give you your, your view real quick. Hold on. Yeah. What's your artist going to see? Mm, I don't want to get kicked off on here, so I'm going to turn it down. Um, okay, what does the COVID debut look like? Uh, what is, what's your artist started wanting to start consider? I don't know. Yeah. Re- repeat that. Repeat that one, Shelly. Um, I'll, ch- I'll do the second one. Uh, what does the COVID debut look like? Um, you know, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. I think for the most part, like the rollout is kind of similar. You know, you post a picture or post a a uh, little snippet of whatever it is um but for the actual release we might I'm gonna have to get a little creative I'm still thinking on like how exactly I want to do it um it might be it might be a little live performance of it it might be a studio session of me recording it you know I don't know we'll see but make sure you're on the lookout for it I know that much okay a new artist wanting to get started in the mm-hmm. industry how did they do that with do COVID, that with COVID. Uh, by going into these folks' lives that they have. Um, Justice from Love Renaissance, he does lives. 
I've been trying time. to get in that. You know, um, one of my homegirls, Bobby Storm. Shout out to Bobby Storm. She is on everybody's live. She she has sung on DJ Khaled live. She has sang on uh, I think what's his name. I don't know, but she done done a lot of lives. But and I saw. I think. Aren't you cool with um Jayla Darden? Yes, Jayla she too. Was, she was on hers IG live mm-hmm. for girls. Yeah. In the- I was like, so I think just yeah, going going on live, and I think with, if you're a new artist, you have to figure out like how these folks can get to know you personality wise. If you can't do a show live, I'm great. I'm great live. You know what I'm saying? Like I've, you can talk to me all day on the stage or off stage. But if mm-hmm. you're at home and people don't really don't know how to even start a conversation with you, I think that's where you have to start to for people to get to know you before the artist before the music and then then once they know you and they're like oh i like you i like your vibe you make me laugh or you're funny yeah. or you got a smart mouth i, I do too you know what i'm saying like yeah. little, if they have some similarities and they feel like oh I, that like that could be my friend or we can we can have a conversation my then own. yes i can't Yep. <laughs> but yeah, you're my homegirl, so I can I can talk to you and then throw the music in there. And it's if it's you know some five music, they just going they gonna like it regardless. They, they gonna what did I say earlier? They gonna love this personality. Regardless. Um, so it's safe to say, um, obviously quarantine has messed up a lot of people getting to to a bag. A lot of things have been canceled. <laughs> But there have been definitely from both you and Kirsten, there have been many ways to, um, in your words, pivot, even though, you know, some people hate that word. It's cool. Um, There have been many ways to transition and to continue being the artist that you are, which I love very Mm -hmm. much. Um, So, you know, you got all of our support. Oh, thanks, guys. I can't wait. Butterfly for me is always on repeat. Thank you. Thank you. My song. Um, but I think it's also super dope. Like both you and Kirsten said, it's really important to have a support system behind you. People aren't always in the vision, but that's not for them. They they might be late. You might be yeah. antagonists, and that's fine. You might but be it, late, but don't be trying to get into the sex scene. Don't be trying to think I'm gonna get you a free ticket when right. You, you gotta buy the ticket. You gotta buy the ticket. I don't know you for real, bro. My, like, if, my policy, if you, if the show ain't sold out, you gotta buy that ticket. And even if the show is sold out, we can still buy a ticket. You can cash out. And buy it. I might have a few extra to sell. Figure okay. it out. Yes. Uh, yeah, y'all make sure you stream Butterfly on all streaming platforms. Dream. Dream. Dream I'm super excited Jack. for you. She's not just an artist. She does it all. She went to school for business, mm-hmm. ma- music management, right? Music management, yeah. yes. Music management, Whole bachelor's yes. degree in that, you know? Let me work me a little bit. Give me some work, y'all. Work. Give give the girls some work. We in the house. I'm super yeah. proud of you, as always. Um, wow. Any any final words? Like, do you want to leave the people with a gem? <laughs> um, do you? I can gas you up all day, but okay. Go. What song should I sing? Give me a song. Give me a song. Give me a song. Um, no. so, drop a couple of bars, sis. What? What's the I part you start with? That I intend to stop living. I won't pretend I'm good at forgiving, and I can't hate you, although I have tried. I, I, I still really, really love you. Love is stronger than pride. Yeah. Check out the EP, y'all. Butterfly. That's on period. <laughs> y'all, give it up for Dree Jack. Make sure you follow her at Dree Jack Music. Sister, I yeah. love you. I will too. Love you too. You like- All right. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Oh, I don't know about y'all, but I've definitely caught some dope gems tonight. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We had Hey Kirsten on here tonight, aka Kirsten Daniels. Yes, and Dree Jack. Um, make sure you guys follow both of them at Dree Jack Music. 
Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to head over to godsfavorithomegirl.com to get all of your merch um, and just everything. Support my girl, Shelly. Support a Black business, people, okay? I'm coming with all the energy, okay? Support a Black business. We love y'all. And um, yeah, follow me. <laughs> Who am I? Oh, I'll remind you. I'm Anissa Brene. Again, your hostess with the mostest. Thank you so much for having me, God's Favorite Homegirl. Until next time, peace, love, and stay in the house. All right. Take your vitamins. Bye.